And so I have listened to Dream Theater at last in their entirety, their entire discography. Of course, I listened to them before uh, certain songs that you might guess which ones actually. But in order to really get the band, you should go a bit further than just surface level, go deeper. In the case of musicians, just listen to their albums, all of them. And I've come to some conclusions regarding Dream Theater, and namely two or something. And by the way, I recorded this video like two weeks ago, but now the time to release it uh, could have not been better. Because you know what you would call the classic drummer of Dream Theater, Mike Portnoy, has returned to the band. But I believe that he returned to the band like years ago, so that's a sign how much detached from the band uh, history and music I was. So that's why you should take this with a grain of salt, what I'm gonna say. Or not. Fuck you. Firstly, what do people think of the theater in general? Uh, most of them know them as like a, this weird band that uh, uses all kinds of weird time signatures and all the, this stereotypical progressive band that you think, man, that's not my particular type of music. And that's thanks to one particular song, The Dance of Eternity, because it's, it, it's, it's really crazy. It has like a gazillion time signature changes and everything. That got absolutely out of hand with odd time signatures. And this song has served the band like a double-edged sword. On one hand, it really does the job what the progressive music has to do, like to show you what is possible, what you can do with music, with the rhythm, with everything, just to push the abilities to show you you can do much more than just the average, whatever, mainstream metal and non-metal song. And also it received the kind of meme statues, like people made the videos on YouTube about it. And it helped for Dream Theater to grow their audience. A lot of people discovered Dream Theater via this meme, via this really weird track. That's one edge. The other one would be that at the same time, a lot of people who heard this song may have thought that Dream Theater is all about it. And because it was so ridiculously, deliberately weird and too over the top, uh, those people may have thought like, man, that's not my thing. Like, if they do this kind of music, I'm not going to even try to get into them. Why bother listening to another track? And partially I too was in that kind of camp, but I was open-minded enough to not believe that. And so I li listened to their old discography. And so, turned out that Dream Theater in general, is pretty much straightforward. Most of them songs are actually in 4-4. And at times, Dream Theater goes even more poppy, more mainstream than even Metallica in their least progressive and least metal period. And that reminded me that you should not judge the book by its cover and the band by one song. Just like a lot of people may judge Metallica for one track like Nothing else matters, and they cannot really believe they did something like, say, Black and Awesome. I believe Jim Theater would have been such a great instrumental metal band. Uh, well, the other conclusion that I came to is that, man, sometimes the vocals are so redundant there. Like, they stand in the way of such a complex and great music distracts from all the nuances that the musicians put into it. Like, uh, and that's why they sometimes hold their horses and go with 4-4. Four, four, mellow, really easy to listen to. And sometimes they just go all out. Like Dance of Eternity. To kind of make up for that. Because their musicianship is too overwhelmingly big for playing just regular singing songs. Uh, especially bass. Because I'm bassist, so I have a, sp a special place in my heart, in my trousers, for bass. And the bass is Dream Theater is a wow. And that really shows how much of musicians they are. They know when to do more and when to do less and when to do right. Most of the time they do, actually. But again, I cannot get over the fact that sometimes just, just, just get rid of the vocals. And I know, actually, that there's this division in the Dream Theater fans, like those who are fine with it and those who are not. Uh, so it's like in Metallica, those who defend load, reload, and tank, and those who say this complete shit. And that's normal. And I tend to be more of a in no vocal sport. But, mm -hmm. And actually, props to the band. They are one of the few bands that actually release the instrumental versions of their songs. That's really great. Go check it out. If you cannot stand the vocals in Dream Theater, you have pretty much, I guess, all the songs in their instrumental form. So in a way, they are a great instrumental metal band. Maybe the greatest one.
And also there's more types of progressiveness outside of just time signatures. And sometimes uh, it's a really progressive song can be in 4-4 because there are more shades to it. But that's the topic for another video. So yeah, what do you think about it? Write in the comments.